Neck pain causes and treatment. Patients can complain of neck pain from a variety of reasons. And in this video, I'm going to try to outline the most common causes of neck pain and how you can treat it. The first thing you want to identify if the patient has a neck pain or shoulder pain. Shoulder pain and neck pain problems overlap. You need to know if the origin of the pain is the cervical spine or if the shoulder itself is the origin of the pain. Does the patient symptoms improve by shoulder abduction and placing the hand over the head? Then the pain is cervical spine origin. Shoulder abduction test. Lifting the arm above the head usually relieves the symptoms because it decreases tension on the affected nerve. Is the pain more when you move the shoulder than the shoulder itself? Is the source of the pain? An important cause of neck pain is disc herniation. The patient will complain of numbness, prathesia, radiculopathy, which is shooting pain that radiates from the neck to the arm. So the patient will have unilateral arm pain, numbness, tingling in a specific dermatome in the hand, as you see here in this diagram, and weakness in a specific muscle group. In cervical radiculopathy, the pain is sudden and goes to the arm. Radiculopathy occurs due to compression of the nerve root, either by a disc herniation or by arthritis that narrows the foramen. Cervical disc herniation occurs most frequently at the level of C6, C7 and it will affect the C7 nerve root. It can also occur at C5, C6, and in this case, it will affect the C6 nerve root. How do you test for cervical spine disc herniation? You test the motor, the sensory, and the reflexes. This is how you test the motor strength of the nerve roots from C5 to T1. This is how you test the sensation, as you see here in this diagram. This is how you test the reflexes, as you can see here in this diagram. A Sperling test for cervical spine radiculopathy. What is the Sperling test? The Sperling test is considered positive when neck extension and rotation towards the painful side reproduces symptoms in the ipsilateral arm. The natural history of cervical radiculopathy is favorable with the resolution of the symptoms in most cases. In cervical radiculopathy, patient will have 70 to 80% successful outcome after two to three months with conservative treatment. How do you really treat a cervical disc herniation? So you're gonna start non-surgical treatment first. We will use anti-inflammatory medication, isometric exercises, physiotherapy, muscle relaxant, then get an MRI if the symptoms does not improve after six weeks of conservative treatment. The MRI result should be correlated with the clinical symptoms. False positive rate of the MRI is high. 28% of asymptomatic patients less than 40 years old will have findings of a herniated disc or foraminal stenosis. In asymptomatic patients older than 40 years old, you will find that 57% of these patients will have at least one degenerated disc on the MRI. 
So the MRI may show you a problem with the disc in patients that are not complaining of any neck pain. Therefore, use the result of the MRI wisely. And don't scare the patient because what you find in the MRI could be a normal process. Persistent disabling pain for 6 to 12 weeks despite non-operative treatment can be an indication for surgery. The surgery is usually anterior and it involves decompression and fusion of the involved disc space. Ask the patient if the patient has gait disturbance, unstable gait when walking, wide-based gait, or hand clumsiness. It may indicate cervical myelopathy due to compression of the spinal cord, which is a serious condition. The patient may have decreased manual dexterity and difficulty in manipulating fine objects, such as buttoning and unbuttoning shirts. The patient may have occipital headache and sense of discomfort in the neck. The patient may not have severe neck pain. In general, in cervical myelopathy, the onset of pain is insidious, gradual, poorly characterized, and localized. Cervical myelopathy is a slowly progressive process with a stepwise progression and deterioration over time. In cervical myelopathy, the MRI will show compression of the spinal cord. In cervical myelopathy, you will find upper motor neuron signs, including a positive Hoffman sign. This is how you will see a positive Hoffman sign. What are other upper motor neuron signs? You will find the patient will have hyperreflexia positive Babineski test, and clonus test. Early recognition and the early surgery is important for a good outcome. The severity of the symptoms and early treatment is most important to the outcome. Surgery is done for any functional impairment of the gait or the hands. Usually, the treatment in this situation is surgery by decompression and fusion. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.